What is the major characteristic that will make you a better governor than any of the other candidates? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a different kind of politician, a different kind of candidate than the rest. I know from my experience as Secretary of State for 12 years that to move ahead in the state, to jumpstart our economy, to make sure that Vermont remains the best place to live, work, and raise a family. We've got to fundamentally change the way we do things in Montpelier. We've got to be less political and more practical. We've got to end the gridlock, and we've got to end those top-down decisions from Montpelier, where decisions are made without talking to stakeholders. How would you describe Vermont? Pro-business, anti-business, or somewhere in between? Well, I think Vermonters are somewhere in between. Um, we've had a tension over these past, well, really probably over our whole past, a tension between wanting to encourage good businesses for good jobs, but also being resistant to having them maybe in our backyards. One of the things that I can do uniquely, I believe, because of uh, my experience working with every community in Vermont over a 20-year period and with small businesses across the state, is I can help us start bridging that gap. Um, in my own office, I changed it from a culture of bureaucracy and red tape that was frankly hostile to business to a culture of service. And that's what we need to do across state government. As governor, will you support a larger allocation for the Vermont Department of Tourism and Marketing to bring visitors to the state? As governor, what I'm going to be doing is looking at all of our programs. My success as Secretary of State is that I demanded transparency and accountability across the board. And so I'm not going to throw money at a program without knowing it's going to work, or knowing how it's going to be used, or knowing how we're going to measure whether it works. And that goes for tourism. It goes for all of our economic development programs. We don't have unlimited money, and I want to make sure that we're not wasting a penny of it. So what would be the top priority for you in economic development? Oh, my top priority in economic development is making sure that businesses, our existing businesses, have the money they need to grow and expand. The fastest way to jumpstart job growth in Vermont is to make sure our existing businesses can succeed. Uh, I was in, uh, well, I did a job store ac across Vermont, and I heard from businesses that, uh, that access to capital is hard. They, we bailed out Wall Street, but the money's not trickling down to Main Street. If you, uh, uh if you were governor, what's one thing that would have, or had been governor, what's one thing that would have been different about this legislative session that just ended? I think it would have been much uh, less, um, we, we would have not had a situation where in the last two weeks of the legislative session, or the last three weeks of the legislative session, um, our economic development agencies around the state would have to scramble to defend their lives. The idea that at a time when our top priority has to be jump-starting job growth, that we'd be cutting the economic development budget by half without talking to the folks who are actually delivering the services, that to me was outrageous. What will you do to restore and enhance the manufacturing sector in Vermont? Well, I actually believe that the key to our economic future as a state, our success as a future, is that we begin to make things again. Um, and that's 21st century manufacturing. When we take a look at our tax code, when we take a look at our incentives, we have to keep in mind those businesses that are the jobs of the future for our kids. 21st century manufacturing that's clean energy, software development, specialty food products, biotech, high tech. And that's, that, that will be a, a focus of my economic development plan for the state. So, uh, Vermont leaders have struggled for decades seeking the right balance between economic development and environmental conservation. Where do you see that balance? I think, think that right now we're out of whack when it comes to the bureaucracy that people meet at the Agency of Natural Resources. First off, I'm going to end the revolving door problem that we have right now with leadership. We need competent mission-focused managers heading all of our agencies. And we need to change the way we do things in Montpelier. We need to get rid of the bureaucracy, bring in a culture of customer service, like I've done at the Secretary of State's office. We need to put in place at the Agency of Natural Resources a, a, a case manager position, a person who is responsible to the applicant to let you know where your permit is at all times during the process, 
who make sure that the process is transparent and accountable to you all along. How will you solve the $100 million shortfall for the next fiscal year without cutting services? Will you raise taxes? I am not inclined to raise taxes. I think Vermonters are taxed enough. I, I, pay, the ta I pay the bills in my family and we're paying uh, income tax and property tax and we're paying for health care and for energy costs. I know that, that uh, to keep Vermont a, uh, the best place to live, work, and raise a family, we need to keep it affordable. What I'm going to do first off as governor is I'm going to look in all the corners for waste. And you hear from folks, oh, there's no more waste left. But I'll tell you, about a year and a half ago, I took over an agency that had been under the governor's office. Not a sexy agency, the public service, uh, the public records department. And I found a whole division, nine people, doing work that had been outdated probably for 15 years. They were microfilming records, right, in this digital age. Why would you pay nine people to microfilm records. No one had ever asked the question why. As governor, the first thing I'm gonna do is have my managers ask the question why. Why are we doing the things we're doing? Can we be doing it better a different way? And that's that's my first, that will be my first step. Tax is absolutely the last. How would you rate the job of Vermont's public schools in preparing students for today's world? We have a real challenge in our public education system. When I talk to our colleges and universities, I hear that our kids aren't coming uh, to them prepared. I'm also alarmed by the fact that one out of five of our kids don't graduate. What kind of life are we leaving for them? We've got to transform schools so that they prepare our kids for jobs of the 21st century. Small employers, especially in Vermont, are having difficulty weathering the recent downturn in the economy. Doubling the unemployment insurance tax and increasing health care costs are pushing them to the limit, and it has begun to impact job creation and wage growth. What are your plans to help small businesses? Absolutely. These are tough times for Vermont. Um, I, I'm going to do a bunch of things, actually. One of, one, of, one of the things I'm looking forward to, though, is uh, next fall we've got a tax study commission that's coming out with a description and analysis of, of our current taxing system and what kinds of incentives and disincentives it's creating. And I, I pledge to you that I'm going to take a, a look, a fresh look, at our tax code. Right now, what we have reminds me of one of those Vermont buildings that you see when you drive down the road where you built a house and then there's an addition and an addition, and soon the house is attached to the barn. You never would have done it that way in the first place. That's really our tax code. We don't even know what we have. We've got to get it straightened out. We've got to make sure we've got the right kind of incentives so that our small and actually our large businesses can succeed here in Vermont. Who has inspired you in your life and why? Um, well, I was inspired actually by Governor Madeline Kunin, and I was a, I actually got to know her when I was in college. Uh, it was before she was governor. She was lieutenant governor. She ran for governor, and she lost. And I met her because I was her waitress. I waitressed to help pay my expenses through college. And I can remember vividly in, it must have been 1981, she gave me a ride home from the airport because she recognized me. And in the car, she just lost her race for governor in the car. I told her how great it was that she ran. And what she said to me, I think she's still saying even, she said, look, women have been doing the work behind the scenes forever. And it's only when we're brave enough to step forward and risk losing that we'll ever get to the head of the table. And it's only when women are at the head of the table that they'll be able to make a real difference for women, children, and their families. Could you name one or two people that you turn to for advice on business issues? Well, Bill Schubart and uh, Tim Voak are two of them. There you go. There okay. you go. There's lots of others. I've got a whole group and anyone of you here who's interested, I'll come join us. What brings you joy? Oh, my children. There's nothing like that. And uh, you said that uh, Madeline Kunin is the Vermont governor who is your model, I assume, inspiration for That's being right. governor? Okay. What's your favorite movie, book, or TV program? Oh, that's hard to say. I'm a voracious reader. So often the books that I've just read are my most recent favorite. I love everything by Isabel Allende. She's a remarkable writer. Um, and uh, with movies, 
It's also, I, I, I guess I don't have just one favorite. Good place.